So something I'm curious about, Mike, how do you decide how you're going to voice things in the drums? Like whether you go to the ride or the hi-hat or it's a tom groove, like how do you make those decisions behind the kit? Mostly Wikipedia. <laughs> no, uh, and if it's not on Wikipedia, uh, a lot of the times it, it has to do with the, the, uh, the translation of, uh, you know, what I'm trying to get out with its overall, you know, the overall purpose of that section or, or that groove being played at the moment. But it is dictated by, you know, a lot of times it's kind of giving a little bit of like I, what the bass is playing or what the guitar is playing or what the, the vocalist is singing. Uh, I have the ability to, you know, kind of get multiple sounds out of each of these many colors I have to paint with behind the right. kit. And uh, so sometimes it's trying to maybe bring something as inside as possible that's not going to run over the groove. Like, so even like if the bass is playing longer sustained notes, that doesn't mean the same way we talked about like locking where we play everything together that I all of a sudden I have to sustain things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that means that I'll move like, like a general rule of thumb I have is like if someone goes right, I try to see how far left I could go. So oh, even like, you know, yeah. if uh, the bass gets more sustained or, or you know, uh, legato, I guess, like uh, mm -hmm. sometimes rather than just opening up the hi-hats and, and following along in suit, I'll try to tighten up even more because... If someone's going in one direction, if I can tighten up, then I can push pulse through and I can kind of like help define that to the listener and still keep that that groove going. Interesting. Yeah. So sometimes like, you know, one of my my general rules is just rather than to try to follow everyone, it's like, you know, to if it's getting uh, the notes are becoming longer and heavier, maybe I uh will tighten up my parts or maybe if the groove is getting busier, I'll try to make an effort to simplify so, you know, so my kind of my, my harmonic choices, yeah. the colors behind the kit, uh, you know, kind of can move in the opposite direction. And then sometimes there's a, like, you know, if you're opening up, then I'm going to like grab the hi-hat and bash out or I'm going right. to play on the ride cymbal, you know. But the biggest thing always is no matter what I'm reaching for uh, is to make sure that that time is translated. And uh, it's hard because there's so many instruments that like, you know, on the drum kit alone, you know, I always laugh just when i'm recording to where it's like you know with the bass it's like we can we can plug it in and go direct <laughs> yeah and it's like and i got 16 20 mics up on, on the yeah, drums the just a lot to, simpler yeah to capture the whole instrument but like that means that like as a drummer you have to really think like in front of the kit of how everything's getting out and uh and make sure that what you're putting out and that is really working in that uh available sonic real estate if there's something busy already happening or there's a lot of sound being generated by someone else, sometimes it's not the best thing to join the party because there's no room left. So right. you got to like go like, okay, cool. Like I'm, I'm going to let them have it and I'm, I'm going to choose to tighten up and outline what they're doing so that makes more sense and I can maybe generate a greater sense of time and energy so to the you, band. you find that listener. maybe creating uh, more, more cr contrasting moments is... is a, a lot of times you'll make that decision, even though sometimes it's not the right way to go. Yeah, sometimes you, sometimes everybody's just got to get in. You got to dig, and right. you know, let's all let's all play big, and uh, you know, or let's all play quiet. But uh, I like to kind of use the tools around me, so I'm I'm just reaching for things to to maybe run the opposite direction. Like the, my biggest goal, no matter what I'm doing or what instrument I'm choosing, is to make what's happening around me mm -hmm. uh, translate well to make it to the audience to a place that makes okay, sense. Okay, explain translate. How, what, what do you mean by that? You know, it's really kind of you know, a concept of rather than just seeing going, okay, well, to me, right here, right now, mm -hmm. this feels good. But then understanding that what's it going to feel like when it hits to the person sitting in the front row of the arena? Or what's it going to feel like to the person in the front row of the coffee shop? Mm -hmm. or the back of the coffee shop, or the back of, your, of the arena. Every song and every environment that you're playing in or venue has all these different variables of translation. So even in right. a recording studio, it's like, you know, overall, just in the, in the end, when the whole song hits your ears, how right. did this translate? Is this translating in a way that's flattering the people around me? It could, it could it, be influenced by just the room itself, I oh, imagine, yeah. right? Like, so if it's a big reverberating, echoey space... Like mm -hmm. that's gonna change how you make decisions, right? Yeah, actually, I play less. Play in less situations a lot because exactly. you know right. I always equate translation to this. Like I picture uh, if you and I were standing on two different end zones of a football field, and I let's okay. just say I was like trying to tell you how to like put together, you know, a uh, 
uh, a cabinet from Ikea, which she can't put together anyway, you know, but I, like, you know, what, how would I, uh, how would I give you directions for anything at a far <laughs> distance and everything like, and what I would do right. is I simplify. would simplify. Exactly. Because yeah. my, my, my words were, are going to take a lot more energy and, and yeah. I want you to get the key points of, of what's happening far away. If we're together closer, we yeah. can discuss the fine details. I, yeah, I think that's, that is true. I, that just, when you were talking about that, made me think about um, uh, our recent tour and our tour coming up with Richie Cotton. When, when we're on the bigger stages, um, I feel this happening with us. Where it's like we're reacting to what the room is doing versus like uh, when we did those runs at the Baked Potato. Yeah. Um, it's such a small, tight room. It, like you could get away with with uh, getting a little busier and uh, mm-hmm. putting a little more in here and there. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah, it's like you know everything has this different uh, uh, you know variables of translation. Yeah. You know, environment dictates everything. But the biggest thing is when you're no matter what you're doing, is just making sure that it's translating in a way that's not only just actually sonically making it to people's ears right you know with clarity but also you know is is being very mindful and translating in a way that's going to allow everybody else to to make it through right not not competing or or uh, taking away from what somebody else is doing whatever choices you make on the instrument at any time no matter what you play I, i i think try to flatter the people around you try to make them sound good try to make them feel safe and right. uh, you know, and and then you're gonna get the best out of them, not like in a managerial way, but like you, I think you're gonna see the best in those players if you play in a way that really tries to make them feel good, and then they're gonna sound good. Right, which in turn will bring out the best in you, and exactly, make you sound and good. the song hopefully. Right, exactly. And then we'll all get another gig. 